everyone, this is Summer Erin, and today we're going to be talking about the reality TV show for The Sims 4 Sparked and why I think it actually spells the future for The Sims franchise as a whole. This is going to be an investigative video. I put together a lot of interviews with the EA CEO and some interesting things I found out about this collaboration. Before we go ahead and get started, my name is Simmer Aaron. I do Sims 4 news, speculation, info videos, as well as paralyzed news, speculation, info videos, and occasionally some other videos. And of course, I have playlists for all of those, so definitely check it out. And if you are new here, drop a comment and say hi, because I try my best to respond to every single comment. So I have already talked about my personal opinion about the reality TV show. This is actually though going to be an investigative video. I put together again several different interviews and basically I found out some things about why this happened. I got some interviews from the Sim Gurus themselves and I also put together some things we've known in the past and I think it's going to say a lot about the future of Sims 4 and a potential Sims 5 and why this is all being done. So why a reality TV show? Well, Lindsay Pearson actually did answer this question. Since its inception, The Sims has been a groundbreaking experience, allowing players to create and virtually live out the stories they create in game. We're continuing that innovative spirit, bringing our community together to compete and showcase their in-game storytelling on a reality TV show in an entirely new way. Now, my past video, I did kind of touch on that where they're talking about how Simgrid Ninja, I believe it was, was talking about how there was a connection between that competitive spirit and storytelling. And I was talking about how that kind of ties into marketing. But don't worry, guys, I have some new information for you that you might find interesting. So this is actually some information I found out about the collaboration itself. So in case you guys aren't aware, this collaboration is between Electronic Arts e-league and buzzfeed multiplayer remember those names electronic arts e-league and buzzfeed multiplayer have joined forces in the launch of a new four-part reality challenge showcasing 12 contestants to compete by creating unique universes in the sims 4 which of course will begin airing on july 17th on tbs now listen to this part. This is a part that I feel like was kind of brushed under the table. The project is the latest for E-League, the e-sports and gaming focused arm of Turner Sports. The brand was founded in early 2016, launching with Counter-Strike Global Offensive Tournaments in their Atlanta studio, which is also home to the likes of Inside the NBA and NBA TV Productions. So this is in alignment with an eSports league. eSports is very popular, I'm going to be talking about this towards the end of this video. Also, there was actually an interview with the vice president of the esports at Turner, kind of explaining how this collaboration happened and why it's happening. The Sims showcases gaming culture, competition, remember, competition once again, and creative expressions in a way that fits perfectly with our E League on TBS programming. We think our fans are really going to enjoy the show. Now, I have a lot of commentary about this and a lot of concerns. We're going to move on for right now. This is an interview from a website called Mike, M-I-C. And this is kind of talking again about why in the world would Sims join an esports kind of feel. The thought of The Sims being presented like a competitive esports game, such as Overwatch or Fortnite, is admittedly tough to imagine. But the trailer for the show does its best to ramp up the hype by showcasing enthusiastic competitors and tearful judges expressing appreciation for some of the competitors' stories. In addition, we also got some more information about how they see this fitting in with the production of the game, and I believe this was from Lindsay as well. It's not the same as watching someone catch fire in a kitchen, she said, referring to competitive cooking shows. Still, the timelines and structure of the show will hopefully add some tension to the computer-bound simmers. You do get a lot of surprising drama out of, oh gosh, how am I going to make this thing do what I want? And how am I going to do it in time? The creative process is still exposed in a way that feels really compelling. 
I find this just really bizarre because esports I just don't think of in terms of life simulation games and you can see how they're trying to fit that mode and they're directly basically saying that. So why this and why esports? It seems like such a strange pairing. Well, one reason could be esports is very popular and has a lot of money in it. And so this is some statistics I pulled up in I think this might be really revealing if you don't know much about esports. Since 2016, there has been a significant increase in esports viewers, both occasional viewers and enthusiastic viewers, which are people who watch regularly. Between 2016 and 2017, there was an over 19% increase from year to year. In 2017, there were 192 million casual viewers and 143 million enthusiasts, making the total audience of 335 million. And then I'm going to insert a chart right here so you can see how it just keeps increasing. Really, really. The fact that by 2021, they expect it to increase another 14.4% shows that there is no sign of it slowing down. Now, as for the future of gaming, I actually was looking into some trends and thinking, okay, so definitely they're tapping into the idea of esports. Is there any other clues as to what the Sims team might think moving forward? My thought is they're really in tune with what's popular in the gaming industry and to a certain extent, you do have to be aware of that. I've said this before, when a game is 20 years old, you have to be cognizant that trends change. You do have to be on top of it. It's a competitive world out there. And I do understand to an extreme extent wanting to get in on some of the trends. Whether or not it really works though in terms of being converted from a game that was not based on those principles, I'm not so sure. Now, as for the future of gaming, I found the current trends include virtual reality, crossplay, open source gaming, aka quote free games, augmented reality, and cloud gaming. Now, have we had any hints that The Sims is moving in this way? In fact, we have. If you will remember that interview with the EA CEO, I'm actually going to go bring up that quote again because I think it bears repeating. As Maxis continues to think about The Sims for a new generation, cross platforms in a cloud of neighborhood world, you should imagine we will always stay true to our inspiration, escape, creation, self-improvement, and motivations. That this notion of social interactions and competition like this kind are actually present in The Sims Online many years ago. That they will start to become part of The Sims experience for years to come. Now when I originally read this quote, I think it was several videos back a long time ago, I was a little bit concerned, but at this point, I'm really seeing a pattern emerging. Do you guys see the key words being used over and over again? Cross-platform, which again, doesn't mean that it's a bad thing, but I'm just telling you this is the way I'm really seeing not just Sims 4, but maybe Sims 5. So cross-platform, which goes with the future of gaming, I told you a trend was cross-play. The cloud of a neighborhood world, again, cloud gaming is one of the trends we we're talking about competition, esports, virtual reality. So what do you guys think about this? I want to make a couple things clear because even though I really enjoyed investigating this, I don't want you to think that I think that the reality TV show is horrendous. I don't think it's the end of the world. In fact, I think in some ways it could be positive. If you guys want to know my pros and cons on that, you can definitely check out my video on this prior. So it is not all bad. It is a way for the community to get together. And some of these things aren't bad either, right? I do like interacting. I do love the Sims community. That's why I like having a channel. I do like some cross-platform capability if it means things like console players get access to the gallery and we can interact with them. So does that mean it's all bad? It absolutely doesn't. But what I'm concerned about, and I said this in my last video, is if there's an emerging trend and if this is going to be their main focus. So some resources going to this is absolutely fine and the game needs to innovate, right? It needs to continuously think about these things. But my worry is, is this the future of The Sims franchise? Again, I'm not trying to tell you that for sure this is all going to happen and some of it could actually be good. So how could it be good? 
it could enhance what the game is now. So what I mean by that is building better tools for a gallery, a more nuanced gallery, having more of those options. But it can only be done if the core of the game is strong. And the main reason people come to The Sims is to be creative, right, and express themselves. And so in order to do that, we need a robust single player base game that comes with depth, that comes with consequences. And if we have that, then these things could actually enhance that experience and make it feel even more lively and it could be great. But I have yet to hear a single EA employee or Sims developer team really talk about that in those terms. The best we've gotten so far were those community surveys. I still have hope for that, but I think it's important to advocate and explain what we really want. Now, I wanna say, preface, what we really want, everybody does want different things and that's okay. But if you have something that is really important to you for The Sims, I'm thinking maybe we need to be proactive and put out some petitions. I know there's some petitions out there. Talk to The Sims team. And I don't know how much influence we have, but I'm really serious about this, guys. I love The Sims franchise. I absolutely do. And I am not going to fight some of these innovations. I think some of these are going to happen anyway, and they could be really good. On the other hand, I don't want to see The Sims lose what made it special in the first place and what brought us together in the first place. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below and please be kind to each other. Remember, it's okay to have different opinions. I know this is a controversial video, but it was just meant to be investigative. On that note, I will see you in the next one and stay tuned. Bye.